Hi everyone, my name is Adam Dunlap. I'm here with Parkour.com. And we have the esteemed privilege to interview Sebastian Foucault today. Oh, I'm so excited for this interview. He does not need an introduction. Clearly, by far, unquestionably, one of the most important people in parkour freerunning history, and we're so honored to have him. We have questions from, from you guys today, and hopefully we get to talk to him more about his philosophy, his current projects, and hopefully the future as well. All right, Seb, that was the one formal part. Now it's all now it's all just more casual. Here's a things okay. so people know how to follow you. Thank you so much for your time today. This is so cool to be able to talk to yeah, you. My, my pleasure. You are now. I figured we would just start talking about your current projects, and then I think that might lead us into more discussions about training or, or philosophy or other things that maybe people would find value in. Does that sound good? Okay. You're in you're in Colombia right now in Bogota. Yes, I'm in Bogota now. Cool, and you're doing you're on like a world tour of sorts. You've gone to like four different cities in the last month doing workshops. Yes, yes, yes. I've been to France, <laughs> so because I'm living in in, uh, in UK, mm -hmm. I've done France. Then after I've been to Germany, then Germany. I've been to uh, Denmark and Switzerland, mm -hmm. and then now I'm in uh, yeah Switzerland, and now I'm in Colombia. Awesome. Now, have, did you set these next, up? or did, Next, next yeah. month, I'll be in America. You're coming to the United States? Yeah. Where? Where in the United States? Yeah. Yeah, I will tell you soon because now we just, we just, I just talk, uh, uh, I just talk with the guy and uh, literally we start to put it down the, the schedule basically. Mm -hmm. A lot of organization, a lot of things to organize, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So then, I'm and coming to you guys. <laughs> I mean, it's a big country. We're a big country over here. Yes. But hopefully, yeah, that's why it took, it took all months. So I'm gonna have like, but I think I'm going to come in in two time. Like one time, I'm gonna do one side more like uh, New York or like all this all, all this side. And East Coast. Uh, another month, I'm gonna do the other side. Really? Oh yes. man, that's exciting. That's exciting. That's really exciting. I, I realized that maybe I was a bit rude. I just launched in and started asking you questions. How are you today? I mean, how how is I'm, life? How are you feeling? I'm okay. I'm fine. For me, what is very important, as I say now, is to be on tour because for a while I've been to the side and not seeing what's happening and not mm. really um, uh, interacting. Mm -hmm. Even I'm always uh, approachable, but uh, yeah, things uh, things change and my way of thinking change. So now I believe now uh, I want to be more open and to have no boundaries and I want to speak with. Whoever is available, whoever want to hear from me, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, your online presence has really changed recently. That yeah. that change you just mentioned was it? Tell us about that. What was what was your thinking before, and then what caused that shift to now maybe be more connected and more open in different ways? I would say I always have this philosophy of being aside with everything because for me, parkour is a is a gift you have just for yourself. Mm -hmm. So I always say I want to be out of all politics. It's mm. not my thing. Everyone mm. has a choice. Those who want to be to take part of politics and everything, it's, it's good for them. It's good for the meaty, whatever. But that's not my thing. My thing is practicing. I'm an artist. I'm a spiritual. So for me, this is it. And um, but uh, recently, as I say, there is a few things happening uh, to me. In a health way, uh, lost a friend, mm. so a lot of things happened to me. Really shift my uh, my way of thinking mm. and drive me more to way of uh, we don't have time for for minor things. So if you want to do something, do it right now. So mm. I'm I'm uh, I'm literally living what I believe and what I what I change in my head, and uh, that's it. I that's it. It's pretty straightforward. It's like carpe diem in, uh, yeah. in, uh, in real life. Right. Well, and I, I think people are are happy for that. I think they're happy to see you. You mentioned telling okay, stories. You mentioned, yeah, you mentioned telling stories in Berlin, stories that people don't know. One of the things that I've always felt is like missing from the parkour world. And one of the things that I loved is hearing stories about the past, things that aren't online. 
and now of course everything's online we have social media and you, you know all the yeah. big names in the parkour world document their lives practically they'll show you their dinner and things like that but yeah. what about the past what happened how did things start what all those things to me are like is like the heart or the soul at least of the history and to have you out there yeah. is one of the biggest blessings in the parkour world now i think yeah but for me as it's like one of the things what i notice is the parkour is parkour learning uh add whatever people call it mm. is for me it's bigger than ourselves mm. uh us the founder even though i don't like the word founder but mm. however this is the way it is sure uh, it's become huge now and uh but i believe now uh, with all the new generation and all the new superstar uh there is a, a big missing which is the origin uh i would say also the wisdom uh parkour has become a sport and uh, as the rules of any traditional sport is like uh the new guy is the guy so the guy who's jumped the furthest is the guy but uh parkour for me has something deeper and uh, but everyone can do one thing with with themselves so for me my thing is to stand here and to be able to talk to whoever wants to listen and to spread my message and uh, and as i said because one day uh will be just uh, uh completely forgotten it's already happened i can go yeah. to a place and i see people practice parkour they don't even know who i am i'm okay with that but this is the this is the reality now yeah well, that's that weird dichotomy of like being humble as you are, but then from like my perspective, I don't have to be humble about you. I can be like, if you don't know Seb Foucault, what are you doing? You what do you know? It, you know, it'd be like it'd be, it's like not knowing Michael Jordan. It's like not knowing Larry Bird or Magic Johnson or as an actor, not knowing like Marlon Brando. Like, what what are you talking about? Like, do you even are you even a, a student of the discipline or? It, it's quite weird, and so I think you've identified that gap, that 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 missing link, that I think is vital. It's so important. Yeah, but this is this is the the, the, the generation we're living in. Mm. This is a new generation, a generation of social media. They want things very quickly. Uh, they're not interesting. Some people just started parkour, and they just know they started parkour because I don't know. They may see like a, a Red Bull out of motion, right? And that's how they get inspired. And right. and this is their this is their background. It's sometimes you like, oh my god, that's so wrong. But this is it, and that's reality. We're living right. in a completely different era, so we need to live with it. Mm. And uh, all I can do, my own action is, I can step up and say, hey, I'm here. If you want sure. to ask me a question, I'm here. But but I can live really happy with that because parkour, as I say, is a treasure. As far as you can move and you have it for you, for me, that's fine. Right. Tell us about this. You started the the. Oh, and I, I do have a, a quick question. What's the right way to pronounce your name? Foucault. Foucault. Sebastian Foucault. Foucault. Yeah. Okay, Foucault. Yeah. Well, I, could we just say Foucault? Well, it's always but, good, even with, with an accent. It's always good. Yeah. Okay. You started the Foucault Academy. Yeah. How are you? Are you still doing that? And you have classes that people can sign up for right. in in London? So yeah. Let's uh, let's be pretty straightforward. My academy is a club, so it's not like uh, it sounds like academy wise huge, but I'm still facing a lot of obstacles. Mm -hmm. That's life, and uh, literally I'm in a school, so I share my uh, my my place within the school. So I'm I'm not in control of uh, fully of my destiny of everything I want to teach as a legacy. Mm -hmm. My wish will, will will be to have a place, my own place, when I can create and experiment uh, like my own laboratory, like a right. show. But I don't have that. So some people mm. from America, they've got uh, uh, Tempest Gym, and like uh, you know, like you got um, how do you call it? This one in New York, the um, uh, the Brooklyn Zoo, something like that. Yeah, 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 Brooklyn Zoo, yeah. Yeah, you see, but now, but now, it's anywhere almost in the world, people start to come with the park and their own stuff. Right. I think it's really it's really shame because if you look at it, none of the founders got their place. It's really weird. It's very weird. It's very weird. So, so this is it. So for me, uh, like you talk to me about my academy, it's successful because uh, we're full. I've got my student. I can share what I want, but it's not the full extent of who I am. And it's right. like uh, almost feeling my process almost stuck a little bit. Stop a little bit. Now, do you teach all those classes, or do you have students of yours that are co-teachers or that lead some of the classes? Uh, to be honest with you, uh, I'm teaching. I'm teaching Monday, 
Monday, Tuesday, I was to do. I used to do Wednesday outdoor, but I'm not doing so. I do Monday, Tuesday, and Saturday. But uh, I have to say now, I, I I want to step back. So my uh, my coach, I got coaches. Right. So I want my coaches to to coach. But it's, it's a subject where we can talk also the subject of business. Some people because in France, like money is always something bad. Right. Which is uh, right. Anyway, it's it's not, it's the way how you use it, make it bad. But anyway. Right. So for me, the plan would be to teach the teacher, and then the teacher teach, <laughs> basically. And then I right. can step back for me, still being here, but more help them to be teachers and to do what they love to do the most. Mm. And I can focus on on my concept and the stuff I develop and work with my coach around the round table and keep developing. And also now, because I do the world trip and I know more people, it's to connect with other guys like from the... Uh, I've got Parkour One, right. uh, now I've got uh, Try Parkour here, I've got people in Denmark, but uh, now I'm more open and I'm more aware, so there is many places I want to see, I heard about Apex Parkour, and I want to see how they do things, I want to I want to see everything, mm. uh, free running Tempest, wherever people say to me there is this place I want to see, but that's my mindset, that's where I am now. Mm. Can you tell us about uh, your philosophy? The training philosophy. What do you want to know about the philosophy? Well, I'll give you a prompt. What's very different from you and David, it seems, yeah. not to make a difference, but just to delineate something that stands out to me, is that you yeah. always emphasize play. That seems to yeah. be a kind of a centerpiece of you as an individual, but then also what you talk yeah. about and how you move. Can you tell us more about that? So, um, it's good because I'm doing the tour. It's, it's, that's one of the things I'm doing. So I do a lot of talk and I can explain to people uh, all this stuff. Now I'm live. So yes, I'm different with David. But I think that's one of the, where, where the mistake with the founder, we, that's where we fail. Mm -hmm. Is we did, like, individual, we're different. Totally. And, uh, uh, but with David, I share, I think I've got more things in, well, probably not. It's interesting because with the guy from uh, uh, R2D Plasmo, Yamakasi, I've got something... Uh, I really uh, appreciate and I like kind of the togetherness and everything. But um, for example, David, I like a lot of things with the idea of uh, be, being strong. But also, uh, uh, it's kind of like the, the idea of big, big being uh, like very close to the traditional sport, you know. But everything, everything is from the legacy of his fathers and his, fa his father. Sorry, and his father for me was also a person I was looking looking after because for me when I started when I met David and David was doing what he was doing I couldn't do none of that hmm. so uh, for me what is it uh, uh, my my mentor was Bruce Lee so for me when I was seeing David or his story with his father it was kind of an alignment with that so for me hmm. uh, that was brilliant for me I wanted to get dive into it and learn as much as I can and I did learn because I wasn't a person who dare or who had uh, uh, confidence I was more kind of a followers so but I always have I always have these uh, things of play this this is in me if people know me you know you see me in James Bond and everything like I do the serious face but in reality <laughs> I'm a person who likes to laugh I want to have good time and as I say to you now something's changed in my life and for me I want to have good time I don't care about all the politics all the talk mm. for me as far as I can speak with people having fun and, and truly love, this is it. And also, if you look at nature, how the animals learn things is through play. So, and that's, that's, my, that's my legacy. I'm here to teach play and I can show people even through play you can learn things. Hmm. So, uh, it, what no, else do you want to know? That's great. How old were you, how old were you when you met David? Like 14, like Did you it was move? Around 1989, something like that. Did you move to Lis? Yeah, yes. I, I, I was very close to Lis because uh, the town where I was born, called Bretigny sur Orge, is very close to Lis. It's like a, it's very, very near to Lis. So um, I was, um, Lis is, is where I grew up basically. Mm. And um, I was about to say something. What was it? Um, I forgot. <laughs> When I when I, I spent a lot of time in Lise a couple years ago, a few years ago, and I met yeah. a man named uh, Jos, 
or Jocelyn, Jocelyn or something. Yeah. And he said that when I was talking to him about some of the history, he is older than you and David. And he said he called you the perfect compliment to David. He said you were like you and David pushed each other to become better all the yeah. time. What, okay. did, what was your experience with that? And where would you be okay. had you not met David? I'm glad everyone can hear so I can, I can tell my truth, which is the truth. <laughs> so, uh, yes, we're, co we're kind of complementary, but people need to understand I, was, I wasn't near anything David was doing. Hmm. So, for me, uh, I always had this, uh, I wasn't the guy who can do things, back up the, the things, but I was more like an observer. Um, I was so much into philosophy, into martial arts, I'm an artist, so you can imagine when I saw David doing things, I was kind of like, like poetry and try to, to, to make something beautiful around it, you know what I mean? Which David doer, okay? It's not about talking, it's I'm doing it, okay? If there is something to do, give it to me, I'm doing it. Mm. And that's, that's where uh, the friendship we were together, and that's where we, 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 for a long time, we were together. But same time also, um, later on, it leads to, to some, uh, some problem. But however, we were, we were kind of like yin-yang, if I can say it like this. That's beautiful. No, that's beautiful. And that, and that to it totally makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but now, as they say, yeah. we separated for a long time, but now we're good friends. I'm very good friends with David. Mm. And for me, this friendship is beyond parkour. I, for me, literally, I still like parkour, but at the same time, I don't care about parkour. Because us, as old founders, we fail as put the minor stuff to the side and get together, uh, not least together, but okay, come on, let's move forward. Yeah, and, and I think that's, that's what we're seeing in the parkour world at large as well. Uh, when you're young, right, we have a different energy, and then as we get older, and, and I'm younger than you, obviously, but as we get older, then the brain starts to change, and we start to realize there are things that are more important than maybe our little arguments that we had or our disagreements, and yeah. I'm very thankful to see that in you. Tell us, tell us more about being an artist, because you, when I first came across you, when I first started doing parkour, I considered you the co-founder of parkour. That was uh, something that was listed that was very well known back then and things, you know. But then now, at the same time, back then you were a painter. Now you're an actor. Yeah. Now you're a public speaker yeah. as well. You're doing workshops. So what makes you different from David, from my perspective, of course this isn't definitive, it's just my perspective, is you've kind of taken that art to all these different facets. Well, David stayed very, very focused on doing, on parkour, on parkour, on parkour. But when I think of Seb, when I think of you, it's like, well, Seb just kind of extrapolated and, and took that poetry and that art that you explained and made that and made uh, movement a super important part of his life, but not the only part of his life because he acts and he paints and he speaks and he does these things. So tell us about where that comes from and then what does that mean to you to be an artist and how that affects your movement? For me, it starts from the... Now it's really linked with the philosophy, okay? Because people need to understand the lack of confidence at the beginning. And I always try to look for who I am and where I'm going. That's the starting point of everything for me. This is the core essence of who I am. And uh, being with David, David was very well-driven. He knew exactly where he's going, exactly like you say. But for me, I didn't know. So everything from drawing, I took it from my brother. Everything from parkour, I took it from David. So I always find myself like a chameleon. Mm. And that's where I start to get my strength. I felt like I can do anything because before I didn't know. But once I got the formula, I kind of play with the with the aspect of getting to to uh, one discipline to another discipline, which was the origin of free running. My, my concept I wanted to do at the beginning. Mm. Following Bruce Lee concept, take what is useless, reject, uh, take what is useful, reject what is right. useless. And uh, for me, sometimes I felt myself a little bit like Forrest Gump, because yeah. it's kind of like you always end up in the place that you're not supposed to be. Uh, huh. I was chasing the story of David's fathers, uh -huh. and that's why I ended up being a firefighter. That's the only the only reason I've been firefighter because I wanted to know if the story I heard was true. And, and that's why I did this. So I've been a firefighter. I've done all this stuff. But then I broke my arm. So I, I had this story with my broken my arm. So I need to come back from this injury, which was severe injury.
injury. Mm -hmm. I came back from this. This was like we say, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Mm -hmm. So I came back from that. Then after that, uh, the guy we were doing like all the Yamakasi stuff, and then I split because I was thinking, oh, I want to have a safe job, and because my parents told me like this to have a like uh, to study and get a safe job. I wasn't good in study, but I tried to get something uh, safe. And I learned that doesn't exist, and that's where also I start to decide. I start to understand. Uh, I always say that I want to live with artists. I want to be surrounded by artists and to live as an artist. Mm. And then after I make very strong choice, when I decide, you know what, I'm done with all this interview. When I just want the guys doing like big jump and jump from one roof to another roof, and I say now I'll do only documentary because through documentary, I can we can touch the people. We can know exactly. We can you can know exactly who he is. Then came Jump London. No, right. Transforce Force first, then Jump London. So it's, it's a circumstance, like I said, like Forrest Gump, Jump London, Jump Britain, Jump Britain, then I've, I've been contacted with, by Madonna, working with Madonna, being asked, like, do you want to do a bit of, a, of a dancing? So, okay, I'm doing a bit of dancing. So uh, you need to do choreography, uh, you need to draw the stage. So a lot of stuff like this like happened to me, but I didn't plan. I didn't say, oh, I'm going to do that. Then after I've got like James Bond coming to me, like from the James Bond perspective, we want you to, to be in the James Bond movie. So, oh, really? Okay, why not? So I'm in James Bond. I work very hard being this, knowing I've got vertigo, but in the script now you have to climb the crane and everything. So as I say, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So every obstacle changed my, my way of thinking. So I was very, very independent. I had some problem with uh, so-called agent. So, and I learned through pain. So I said, I'm no more agent. I'm strong by myself. Mm. And I, I, I got, uh, I'm the, I'm the chief of my, des of my destiny. So I do, I do whatever I want to do, okay. and that's that's me. When you I'm were, challenge. I have an interesting question for you. Yeah. It's about it's about film because you did when you you really came onto the scene worldwide with Jump London. However, yeah. I, this this thought hit me last night when I was thinking about what questions to ask you. You had the, your Yamakaze group. And then a group of them did the Yamakaze film with Luc Besson. And then yep. and then there was the B thirteen movie that David starred in. But you weren't yeah. you weren't in either film. But it was after the after the Yamakaze movie you were still with David because then you shot the T F one feature and you're there moving with David. So Yeah, that was the bad that was the bad story for me. <laughs> tell okay, tell us that story. Hello. Uh link to what you say. I I'm more still around David. Still like like I'm still the friends, right. but kind of like followers, right? But this TF1 particularly portrayed David a lot of truth in it. But all the all the stuff I was living as a friend with David wasn't portrayed in this in this in this uh, rep, uh, t uh, like reportage. Yeah, and this hurt me. This really hurt me because I thought we were like like brothers, which was, we were, but I was younger. So, but the. What was shown wasn't how I felt. And then this launched the breakup for me. They said, okay, it's enough. Because what I felt is not the same for David's point of view. Really? Because That's where we break. Because it, because it focused on David? Because the, cause the feature didn't... It also, didn't... There is the portrait where David is... I think if you see the, report, the reportage with David is, is with his brother. Right. You know? With and Jeff. It, it looks like almost like they, they grew up together and that's how they... David become who he is, kind of. Okay. And as, we, as you say before, you know, they, they were kind of complimentary. Jocelyn said, mm. Jocelyn mm. was in this, and he said, it's David and Seb. Even yeah. physically speaking, in terms of jump, I did none of them. It took me ages to climb down, be like, whatever. I still was here. So you watch a documentary where his brother, from the blood, is his brother, but he's, he's, he's got nothing with it. That's what hurt me. So now we pass mm. on to it with David. But that's the story. So, what did you want to know about well, Yamakasi? And oh, I, that's interesting. So then that uh, that led to a little bit of a break. Now, see, I spent a lot of time with Jeff as well. And there was one photo, I think, that he showed me or was in a magazine or something of you and David when you're young, when you're like maybe pre-20s. And it said like, it said, what did it say? Like, Captain... And lieutenant or something like that it really paired you two as being like i gotta find this photo because it's like in a magazine and it, and it shows you just standing side by side and it really was that but the tf1 feature didn't show that at all in fact the tf1 feature i can see why you're saying this because it really portrayed you as kind of just being a follower of david 
you're on the roof and he does his jump and you're kind of so yeah but it was a good thing like I said it was a good thing mm. to wake up cool sometimes you need that it's like the movie you need because without that I won't be the person now standing in front of you talking it, you need that you need something who hurts you really badly and then you see the truth huh. and the truth was definitely yeah you're, you're, you're literally followers huh. so hey if I wasn't followers I won't appear in this documentary hmm. okay and because I follow hey you that's it. I have to like subir pour plus subir. <laughs> so I, had, I, I took it, and that's it. And I learned from it. Okay, then. How, with David. Right. How and how old were you when the TF when the TF one feature was? That was to like two thousand one, wasn't it? Like twenty twenty eight maybe. Someone has, someone has to do the math. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I'm nineteen seventy four, so you do the math. <laughs> like maybe twenty seven or something. But but then. Yeah, that's it. Then, uh, but then, like a year or two later, then Jump London came around. Yeah. So then, then, how did that change you? Go ahead. Uh, uh, say again. What was the question? Oh, the question was more like, how did that impact you? It sounded like it launched a lot of things for you because then the Madonna tour yeah. came, then James Bond. Yeah. No, for me, the turning point, the real turning point, was Nike Hungry Chicken. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. And and that by to this day, Seb, in my opinion, in my opinion to this day, that is probably the greatest parkour commercial of all time. Maybe the BBC ad, maybe the BBC ad with David is like just another level, but in terms of marketing, by far the greatest commercial in parkour history. You it know, is phenomenal. You know, I, you know, I won a prize for this one, right? Did you? What'd you win? Yeah, but not me. But this commercial won a prize, the Lion d'Or. Yeah. Oh no way. Wow. So, but it's the story of my life also. This idea of uh, uh, the stuff I've done get rewards, but I didn't get the credit, kind of. Mm. You know what I mean? For example, yeah. For example, for James Bond, there is a Taurus Award. Right. For stunts, right? And the, 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 the sequence for James Bond get huh? the, the Taurus Award, and I've never get any credit for this. So, <laughs> oh, man. Of course. Of course, I share, I share the action with the stunt guy. There is a, a Marvin Campbell and all the stuff. But they've got the trophy. They all got the trophy. And I've got none of that. I, no. mean, I, didn't, I didn't have any of that. No but way. Okay. No yeah. way. So, so I did Nike. I did Nike. Uh -huh. I did Nike. None. I did uh, James Bond. None. And also the Guinness Book Record in 2006. James Bond and Madonna was on them. On, on the Guinness Book Record. Both of them the same years, and I was on both of them, on on both of the events, and but that's my life. It's funny. It's just this is it. So go back to what wow. you just said before. Yeah, hungry chicken was the turning point mm -hmm. because for the first time, visually speaking, I could see I had something. I always say that I wasn't the best, but I see visually that I've got something. That's where I start to be followers completely. Definitely. Yeah. In alignment with the with the splitting with David with TF One and everything. Sure. Just some and, some. And then after, yeah. Yeah. Go. No, no, no. Please, on. please, please, please. And then after the continuity, you do Jump London, mm -hmm. and you are kind of the leader in Jump London. Right. Right. But there you go. This story is important because people need to understand, like, by doing this journey, being the leader, mm -hmm. I start to understand more David. And, and the kind of the burden you have when you are portrayed as the one. Right. It can be jealousy, a white team is not that good and everything and blah, 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 and so on and so on. And that's where also with David, I, I, I understand so many things and many levels. Uh, the fame aspect and everything and people want to be your friend and everything. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Tell us another idea. This was brilliant. Uh, come bring us into future, into future, or in, into current, into current time. You said you have, there was a video I think with your parkour one workshop that happened just a few weeks ago, and yeah. like a short clip that you talked about the difference between practice and training, and yeah. it was very profound. And I've had this idea for years and years and years, but no one I haven't heard anyone articulate it the way you did. I wonder if you could tell us about that idea. For me, it's pretty simple. Each time I see someone who does parkour, they say, oh, I go training. Oh, do you want to train with me? Hey, I'm coming to your town. I want to train. 
for me, I come from a background with with sport, and I understand elite elite sport. And for me, it's always strike me like this is not training. Even the old school way where we were we were training, even we had no goal, but we were training. And I think this is the result of being the the best team ever, which I call Yassi, where we're all together, David include. We were the best ever. There is no comparison around the world because we were training truly and sincerely. But at training is not funny. Training is linked with sacrifice. I talk with Michael Phelps and say, how is the training? He will tell me. He will say, no, I hated it. But that's the only reason to be the best of the best. Tiger Wood, Roger Federer, Michael Jordan, name them. Mike Tyson, they will tell you. The greatest of the greatest, they say, training is not funny. It's tough, but I've got a dream. I go for it. So for me, I can't bear to hear, like, even sometimes I can say, by this second, I say training. But for me, no, this is practice. Doesn't mean I don't progress, but I practice. Because if I start to train, trust me, there is many things came in consideration. Link with the objective, link with sacrifice, discipline. Uh, like, even my, my family, my parents, oh my God, we, it's, it's, we can't live with him because he's so focused. It's like the food has to be there. The, the timing, like so many things. This is training. Practice is like I go outside with my friend. I do this job. Even you make the job. I did the cat pass precision, whatever. Man, this is good. But this is not training. Go cool. hmm. learn about traditional sport. Learn what is training about. And then you'll see. Training is linked with traditional sport. Traditional sport is linked with competition. Competition leads with, with uh, sacrifice. Sacrifice your body, your health and everything. And so on and so on and so on. Mm-hmm. I heard that back in the day when you guys when you guys were really training, I heard you would train eight hours a day. I heard it was like seven in the morning until like yeah. eleven, and then you take a break for lunch, and then it was another four hours. Tell us a little more about that. Yeah, but first of all, when you live in mom's and that, and, and and dad's house, you've got the clock is open. You can do. You got free time. So for for me, I've got almost nothing else to do. So uh, for me, it's. All, all, everything, like I'm talking about me, so I don't, there is no mistake when you talk about yourself. No one can say, yeah. But for me, it was all about training. I go with David. David has got this level. For me, it's about training. But also, I was a bit like like a kid. So for me, I, at this time, it was a lot of uh, Japanese anime from, uh, uh, I, I would say it in French, maybe people will never get it, but the Chevalier du Zodiac. So it's like uh, the Zodiac uh, Warrior or whatever, uh, Dragon Ball Z. Um, uh, Okuto Ken, all this stuff, but all these uh, like cartoons was all about training. So that was my, my thing. So I was training, training, training. I watched Jackie Chan, the old school movie. When it was, it was training. It was the, the guy wasn't strong enough. He was training, training, training. Meet the master, give him the knowledge, and then after he beat the guy. That was my. That was all I knew. Rocky. That was the time of Rocky. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Schwarzenegger. It's all about training. Bruce Lee, training. Now you can imagine for me, it's like at this time, like eight hours is nothing because the people I admire the most, they fucking train. Sorry for that. They're just training. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. Or Jed Lee, you hear these stories. I think lots of times people think that the people that achieve great things just were physically blessed. And then you find out how much they trained and you you realize that it's, it's a different mentality and you're in a different place yeah. mentally and emotionally yeah, it, to achieve that. That's it. Yeah, it makes you tired. It can make you really retired. You better have a clear objective. Now my things change. I'm practicing. People can say, oh yeah, now what? They don't have the same level of these guys. These guys. Of course, if you see, I don't practice. First of all, the age. Even if I wanted to, I could. I couldn't. Let's be honest. That's it. The level is crazy now. Okay. It's crazy. But at the same time, I don't want to. Okay. And my practice is different. Sometimes I do ice skating. Sometimes I can do like yoga. I just uh, People can see on Instagram. They can see. My God, what is he doing? Like... Yeah, because I'm not, I, as I say, uh, first of all, I love parkour, it's still in me, but I'm not doing only parkour, that's why I wanted to do free running, and then people free running because this stuff with people doing flip and tricks mixed with parkour, which I can't do as much as them, and I'm known as the founder of free running. It's just crazy. So for me, it's not, now I know I'm an explorer. This mm. is who I am. I'm mm. an explorer. And now people can see my life, see everything for me on Facebook, everything, say, oh yeah, my God, these guys just go all over the place. Mm. See, but because I'm an explorer, I find the essence of who we were when we were a child, testing mm. everything. Indeed. Well, I think that's very clear. I think people that watch you see that. 
when you so at these workshops one more question in this regard at these workshops that you've been doing lately the Sebastian Foucault world tour which you said you're coming to the United States hopefully which would be phenomenal and hopefully that just continues to grow and, and snowball for you do you do you talk about all of this or are you emphasizing the childlike way the play way or do you do you touch on the training way how do you communicate that with people Okay. Uh, I will keep a bit of a secret because it's, it's better when you say everything because, oh my god, now I heard it live and I know everything. <laughs> Don't I tell. Don't, Don't tell. Okay. Yeah. So, I like to do speaking, so I will do speaking because mm -hmm. I'm very good in speaking. I'm a public speaker mm -hmm. without being too much. But I would like to talk about everything. When I say everything, it's without taboo. The origin, yeah, he said that, he said this, and then I say it my way, but I will say it. Okay, there is the book, like Julian Angel, write the book. There is many things written about about parkour. I was, I grew up in Lise. Okay, I was with David. I was there with his cousin. I met his father. I, if people want to hear from me, it can always be controversial. But if they want to hear from me, I'll be there and they can talk to me and ask straight away. Without thinking, oh, he's the master. Oh, I respect him. I won't ask him this. No, you can ask me. So that's it. That's what I do when I'm tra traveling. And I explain also my, my, my lifestyle, my concept, what I believe. When I say sometimes uh, I explain, I already start to explain, I follow the season. Okay. Uh, I've got a concept of a grade system. Uh, I've got maturity level. So a lot of stuff I put in place. But you see, I never put it uh, out because before I was very conservative. I've always been like this because of the parkour world. Always been like I pick up and people steal stuff and sometimes create business around this. And for me, it's like... Uh, I, di I didn't want to portray like a successful things because for me successful rhymes with also having money sorry if to say that for some people but I need to pay the bill and to have a roof above my head with my family and for me it's like uh, if I've got knowledge I want to have a bit of uh, something back from it not just say all my things but now I change a little bit I just simply don't care I say everything mm. I just simply, simply don't care so um so if I answer to your question, so what was the question before? Sorry, because we talk about this. Well, I, I think the question yeah, that's was. What I do in my workshop. Yeah, it was something and about my yeah. Workshop and I, yeah, and my workshop also I explain, I I demonstrate how I practice, and I explain to them what is parkour before it gets lost, because now it start to get lost. Right. Parkour has become a sport. Right. It's become a business. It become politics. So I need to explain from my point of view, uh, what is what I call the games. With the S, so uh, that's what I teach. Uh, well, that's what I share because not teaching is a big word. It's a bit, it's a, it's a weird word. And yeah. uh, now go back to was it? What did I say to you about training? We talking about training? Yeah, and then I well, um, we can. I can ask another question, maybe about training. The, I think the original okay. question was about do you do you know. emphasize training at all, or do you discuss it at all in your workshop? No, because for me, uh, if I ever train someone. First of all, the person who's going to stand in front of me is, is going to find it, find it very, very painful. Because I won't start out without him telling me what is his objective. Otherwise, I will waste my time, and it will work. It will. I will waste his time. It will make me waste my time. Because I cannot start a plan or something like that. Training everyone doesn't work. It's not possible. We have different sensitivity, different knowledge, different goal. So it's already a nonsense. Okay. Even like in a football team. Uh, it's very hard for a coach to make everyone go to one way and they, they know what they do they, they're in a career but sometimes to bound a team together is really tough so if everyone says yeah I want to train I say, no I can't do a gathering of training it was, how ridiculous is that I can't train like okay move now people have got knowledge and many coach great coach from the uh, parkour generation parkour one part, like, you, like any group around the world people are good they can teach you stuff okay. but me I talk about ultimate training one on one mm. like Kostamato Mike Tyson yeah. Okay. He saw he saw the diamond inside of the rock, and he said, yep. "Okay, this guy, I'm gonna eat him like an onion. Okay, and I'm gonna find the core of him, and then I'm gonna rip it." Mike doesn't say it on YouTube. People can find it. He has no clue what he was doing, but he find the right matter. He see the potential, and he worked very hard. He said, "We have a deal. Okay, you do you do whatever everything I say, you do. If it doesn't work, you can leave. That's training, and he had to do it. He, like they." From the from the morning to the night, he was saying to me, "This is what you have to do," and he did it, and he was invincible. 
Mm. I cannot do that. No. I don't have the time. Uh, it's too late. I, I want to have fun. <laughs> I just want to have fun. As simple as that. Life is short. Tell us about... Yes. But if you, if you have a dojo one day, if you if you get that, you know, your idealistic vision of having, like, the Fukan Academy, Fukuan Academy be what you would dream of it being, then might someone have an opportunity to be, like, to be trained by you? No. You don't think so? They can have the... No. <sighs> All right. Uh, I, I, can, I can help. I can give uh, advice and something like that. But the beauty is now, it's knowledge. We can share knowledge. So I'm not I'm not uh, unique. I don't have something special. I'm just I've got I just use my brain, and I I can um, give direction. Bruce Lee is dead. He was dead in 1973. Okay, and still now I I, I have uh, so much knowledge from him, but he never he never stand in front of me and teach me anything. Right, right. So, uh, but sorry for the people. No, I won't train anyone. It's no chance. Well, it's too demanding. Okay, so even for the teacher, it's too demanding. Even for the... Oh, yeah, of course. There is a, especially in parkour, in parkour, with my system of great, there is, a, there is, if you, someone comes to me and says, I want to be the greatest of the, the greatest ever. Wow. The responsibility for me is huge. Because we're dealing, we're not dealing, we're not dealing with ping pong. No. We're dealing about parkour. At the highest level, you risk your life. You know Alex Arnold? Yeah, the rock climber. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh See what yeah. He's doing? Oh yeah. Oh oh. He oh. he. It's 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 unhuman. It's he just he, like jumped a generation. It's crazy. Yeah, but but he's doing his stuff by himself, right? Right. But if I was a teacher, if anything happened, who's responsible? Hmm. They're gonna come to me. Hmm. Whoever they're gonna come to. So that's that's what I mean. If someone wants to be the greatest of the greatest, and I start to do something like, like for example, I give an analogy, like an example for Mike Tyson and uh, and uh, and uh, and Kazdamato. Kazdamato literally say, whoever stands inside the ring, literally has to kill them. Almost, this is the idea. It's like you need you need to. Whoever stands in front of your goal of being the champion, world, you destroy them. Destroy by destroy. It's not like oh yeah, like fair play or something. Like that. No, no. And and the opponent could feel it. So if I talk and I, I'm this, I'm not a competitor. That's not competition. It's not in my head. But this is it. This is the goal. This is the way it is. As as hard as people can say, yeah. But I'm holistic, holistic mindset. But this is the reality of sport. Watch the sport. Right. Switch on, switch on your TV. Watch. Let's just watch. This is it. This is competition at the highest level. Mm-hmm. They can be fair play after. Uh, okay, I think we we need to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, the, now we keep along. Uh, we can go. Along. Give me, give me a I don't know. Wait, wait. Uh, Sebastian, uh, I'm in time. I'm in time. Give, give me, give me a, a window. Okay. Five minutes is good. Five minutes is great. We're good. Five minutes because we, I, I could talk for like for all day. Man, yeah. This, well, it's been like so many times. I was like Master Yoda in my bubble, and nobody sees me. So now right. I'm open the bubble, and I can, I can say so many things. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I think that if anything, this is like a teaser. It's like a tip of the iceberg, and I hope people realize how much wisdom and experience you have, so they come to your workshops, so we can have you traveling. Because I don't know anybody else that's 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 doing this from from your from your generation, if you will, from the origins. Dave is not traveling uh, and doing I this. They, uh, I think they do. They do some workshop, but uh, I don't know how their workshop is working. But they, they do. They do travel. They, do travel. Oh, they travel a bit. But as I say, for me, for me, I'm already I'm already thinking about myself and what I want to convey and what I want to share. Mm-hmm. So for me, this is it. I don't know. I don't know. It's almost I don't care what the others doing. As far as I, I'm doing what I wanted to do, and uh, I'm standing in front of the person who wanted to make me and want to know something like very specific or worried about something like for example they've got the story with the fig and everything and how is it possible and the competition and blah 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 and so on and so on and so on mm. i can answer with my humble way of answering this it sounds to me correct me if i'm wrong and then we'll close this out it sounds to me like in the beginning you were very much 
it sounds like the the change is that you've taken control of where you're going. Like you're really tracing your own your own path now. Maybe in the past there was you were following, and then things just came, things just happened. Like you got a job, uh, you got the documentary Jump London. But now it seems like, from what I perceive, you like wait, I'm going to be who I am and do what I want to do in a humble, kind, joyful way. Is that accurate at all? Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's like I turn all the pages. So I, if you have to finish today or tomorrow, there is no page fit like turn. It's like, do it now. As I say, like, uh, I think the, one of the biggest things that impact me a lot is the death of my friend Brian mm. uh, a few years ago. Now, yeah, maybe a year ago now. This time goes so fast. But because I was talking to him, we were talking about acting and everything. We were very exciting about like just just being together and practicing like acting and stuff like that. Stuff like I'm very passionate. Uh, and just just one day I had this phone call and just is is gone. For me, it's like gone. What? What? What does it mean? Mm. And that's still now in my head. So I'm like, oh, this is even I knew like we're not immortal, but this like how sudden it is. Like for me, it was. It's just like all done. Now I got the message. That's it. I I got the message. That's all mm. I can say. Mm. I'm here. If people just don't want to meet me, it's fine. I know I did. I did. I did what I have to do. And that's it. Mm. Well, Seb, you have been extremely gracious with your time. We will kind of yeah, close it out and pleasure. say: Is there anything that you'd like to say or conclude, or anything you want people to know? Uh, you get the last word. Say whatever you like, and then we'll let you go. Um, I'm very accessible on social media. So people can find me on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So if they have any questions, I'm here. I'm available. Uh, um, but what can I say? It's just like uh, if you got a passion, keep it. Uh, don't take life uh, too seriously. Because uh, you have to take everything positive when you have it. Because life is 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 hard enough. Obstacles come to you, like in like energy parkour. Obstacle will come to you naturally. You don't have to force it. So for me, it's like try to be positive. Try to to do your tiny bit, and and that's it. And let's move on. And let's see what the future will will do. Beautiful, Seb. Thank you so much. We will You're put welcome. this. Uh, we'll put this on YouTube, assuming there's no technical difficulties on YouTube and Facebook, so more people can hear it. And please, if you ever have something that you want to share or you want to talk about, we there's so many things we didn't get to, like your acting career. Looks like you have a few projects coming up that have been announced on your IMDb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some stuff I'd love to know, but acting, we'll do it another time. Yeah, but the, act, the acting world is a bit weird. Like I don't know if it's politics. I don't know if it's like uh, the color of my skin or whatever. It's just like. You don't just want the bigger stuff, uh, like uh, like something everyone remember, and you don't have so much opportunity. But I'm not a victim, so I don't know how it works. But I'm still here, try to be um, very accessible, uh, and that's the biggest point for me. People like uh, you see, I'm coming to you, I speak with you, and I'll be available with anyone who who say I want to hear from you, and that for me, that's that's why I'm I am now. I just I literally I say people say my, my God this. I just don't care. Like I said, like talk about like quickly. I talk about, uh, you know, I used to do gymnastics and everything. I'm not competitive, but I watch competition. I can watch World Cup and everything. I'm not doing competition. I'm holistic. David is my great great friend. For me, he's the founder of parkour. Whatever people will say, uh, all together we bring something. The yamakasi, the togetherness. Everyone's got something special. Makes what it is now. Okay. However, uh, as I say, I'm here. That's it. This is it. Now, I have to go. <laughs> All right, my friend. Hey, great to talk to you. And right, wish you, yeah, wish I you very uh, great luck and success in your Columbia. And we'll talk to you next time. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Ciao, ciao. Thank you Au very well. much. See you, Seb. Wow, absolutely fantastic. Seb just logged off the interview. We didn't ask any fan questions today because I was going through them and it seemed like Seb actually answered all the questions that you guys asked. 
that was the, the coolest interview I've had since I've since I spoke with David years ago. And well, David and I had lots of conversations, but since I was since I've spoken with David, that is the greatest discussion on parkour that I have heard. So rich with wisdom and experience, Seb is the man. Please go follow him on social media. You can find him on Instagram, Sebastian Foucault, S E B Seb or Sebastian with an E and then Foucan, like Toucan Sam, but with an F and when it's pronounced Foucault. Amazing, amazing person. He is by far one of the most important people in parkour history, by far. In my opinion, we have David Bell and Raymond Bell, number one and number two, and then Seb Foucan is number three. And then who even knows where number four is? It's like way down the line. It's like a different stratosphere of, of influence and, and history and connection. So please go follow Seb. You can find him on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube. I follow all of him. Parkour.com follows all of his, his sites. We hope to bring you more content from him. So thank you so much for tuning in. If there's someone you'd like to have on the Parker.com interview show, then let us know. And if you'd like to be on the show, if, you, if you're somebody who has a following, if you're somebody who's, you know, humbly says, you know, I'm actually somebody in the Parker world, let us know. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to bring knowledge, wisdom, experience, and insight to the Parker community. That's what parkour.com is all about, bringing the community together through ideas, connecting the historic origins of parkour with the contemporary position of the community. So again, special thanks to, to Sebastian Foucault for joining us today and giving us a phenomenal interview. Hopefully we'll get him again a couple months down the line. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.